And we're coming to you live from the Build Four Tough Studio. Boomer Size and Greg Giannotti. It's Boomer and Geo on the fan. Simulcast across the country on CBS Sports Network and wherever you are in the free Odyssey app. Good Wednesday morning. The ugly weather continues. Nor'easter time as it blows through here. More wind and rain. And obviously no baseball will be played again today around here. It would be absolutely impossible. The forecast would have to change completely as the Mets don't play last night. The Yankees and the Knicks, however, do play last night. Neither one of those was a good result. Of course, the Yankees are off to a great start, so you flush that one and you keep moving on. But there is concern around the Knicks, and this was a game that felt like a Miami Heat-Knicks game because it had some of the same type of similarities that you've seen where the Knicks will battle back, but then they sort of run out of gas at the end, and then Miami makes all the big shots, and the Knicks don't get the foul calls. They don't make the big shots down the stretch, and they're just gassed because they had to come back down 14. Now they're the five seed. They wouldn't have home court advantage in the first round, and they're only two games out of the play-in. So things are getting tight, man. Shrink to shrinkage time, Boomer. Good morning. How are you? Good morning there, G.I. Uh, yeah, you know what? They need uh, they need reinforcements, and they need three guys in particular, and they need to get them quick because these last three games, their last three losses, like you said, all look the same. You know, I think they work so hard. Uh, I think Jalen Brunson worked so hard that the last few minutes of the game, all of a sudden these guys are exhausted. That's when you need uh, your most energy. That's when you need to be making shots. Shots are coming up short. That tells me that guys are, you know, look, they're expending a lot of energy, the guys that he's playing, and there's no question that the effort is there. I will never question that about this particular Knicks team, but they need the, they need the three guys that are not here. I mean, they they just have to. I mean, and if they can get at least two or three of those guys back, Mitchell Robinson and OG Ananobi, uh, that will lengthen the lineup and that will take a little bit of pressure, physical pressure. I'm not talking about mental pressure, but physical pressure off of the guys that are playing these just enormous minutes. So, uh, that's three in a row since last Friday, Friday, Sunday, and then last night, San Antonio, KC, and Miami. I mean, they all kind of felt like the same type of game where they put so much effort into it that the last five minutes, I just felt like, you know, bad plays being made, missed shots, uh, allowing balls to, you know, go off your hands. I mean, these are all things that tell me that at the end of the game, the guys are just exhausted. Now, they may not feel that way. They may, they will never say that. I think they're in great shape, but I just think that they need, they need two of those three guys to come back. If Julius Randle's not coming back, which I still think he's coming back, but if he's not coming back, the other two have got to get back, and they got to get back as quickly as possible because, you know, if they want to have, like, the fourth or the third seed, they can't afford to have, more losses, uh, you know, p- com- you know, piling up here. That's all there is to and it. And we looked at that ten game stretch, went through it. We were talking about seven and three, eight and two. They are now started that ten game stretch, zero oh and three. And why is it that there are just absolutely no updates injury wise on these guys? Think about all the updates we get for baseball players. Like David Stearns holds a press conference in the dugout to talk about Kodai Senga's injury. Garrett Cole's on the Yes broadcast talking five minutes about how he is rehabbing without throwing a baseball and strengthening his arm. And maybe it's too much. Maybe it's too much information from the baseball standpoint. But you get nothing from the Knicks or any of the beat reporters. or just It's just sort of surfacey stuff. And and the, that's why everybody freaked out when Josh Hart said what he said about we are preparing as if, if these guys are not coming back. It would be a pleasant surprise if they do because we don't hear anything about them coming back. There's no timetable. There's no positivity. Uh, they, they just disappear. You might see Julius Randle you know, doing some things before the game, but I have no idea if we're going to see this guy. You know, I also know that today's athletes a little bit different than, say, 20, 25 years ago because they're all protecting – you know, their bodies because of the amount of money that they are about to make. And I I kind of get that. I kind of understand that. Um, uh, I do think that they want to play. Uh, I I just think maybe the people around them are telling them, hey, man, you got to be 100%. Do not go out there and don't be 100%. Because you can imagine if Julius Randle comes back and let's say he's about 85% and we're all excited that he comes back. And then when the game start. He's not the guy he was before the injury. And I keep telling you this. And he's hoisting up threes, and he's not making threes, and he's rusty. 
who's everybody going to blame for the Knicks losing? They're going to blame him. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, I wouldn't want that again. He's had that already here. He's fought through all of that. He's become a fan favorite. Um, and I want him back, but I want him back 100%. And if he's not 100%, then I want him back playing limited minutes and giving me minutes that are, are fruitful, that are uh, quality minutes, but he's not playing 32 minutes. He's just not. He's not going to be playing that kind of basketball. It's going to be a fraction of what we would have expected from him if he's not 100%. I, I just I can't imagine him coming back and just hoisting up threes. Do you want that? No. That's I not mean, his game. No, absolutely not. And you just want him to fit in in the way that he was prior to the injury. The three of those guys, Ananobi, Randall, and Jalen Brunson, were just perfect together. That That's what you want. You don't want him isolation, taking over, trying to do too much on the stuff we've seen from him but I don't in even big think you, games I don't even think you're going to get isolation, man. Because I, part of his isolation was lowering his shoulder. And yeah. I don't think, you know, if he's not 100%, then you're not you're not getting that. And remember, the last time I think we heard about him, the potential for surgery was on the table. Yeah, from that's right. That was the last time we heard from him directly, and that was either right before, or right after the All Star break. So I don't know where these guys are that are covering the team. What's that guy, Ian Begley, SNY? Is that what that guy's name is? He covers all the uh, NBA stuff. Where's he on this? Where's Woj? Where's Woj on this? Where's that Woj D guy? Where's Shams on this? We need to know. Give us a timetable. Because now I'm getting nervous. And and this is what's going to happen. I, I was praising Tom Thibodeau throughout the year and the way he was handling the roster. But what's going to happen is he's going to get blamed and unnecessarily because these guys look tired. That's been the knock on him. Too many minutes. But and then you get to the play? play. But I know, but this is what I'm saying. He had no choice but to do this because of all the injuries if you wanted them to stay in the top six seeds. So, I mean, it's just – and when you see these guys start to get exhausted at the end of games, I'm starting to think, man, like they're just wasting all their energy now because everybody's playing too much because you got two uh, – three major players that have missed all this time. It's just – it's not – it's not the way you want to be going into the playoffs. No, it's not. And and you know, here's the thing. You know, it's rainy. It's dank outside. Dank or word? Dank is right, right? Dank, yeah, yeah. And it's just miserable. Everybody around here is miserable. They're all being affected by the weather, but not you. I have to say that this morning you look like a ray of sunshine. Oh yeah, with your white vest on, nice and bright, and you got your quarter zip underneath it that is some sort of leopard print or like snake print or something. I know it's not, leopard, and and you just and it matches your beard like the like it just oh, yeah. the, I mean you the look pepper. You look like alive this morning. Yeah, got to be alive. You walked in my office when he walked in my office this morning, Al. I looked at him and I said, "Wow." And he's like, wow, you've seen this before. I said, I don't know, but maybe it's just because it's just so crappy outside. Yeah. I'm, Broke it out for you. It was like a, a pow moment. Like, pow! Yeah. I figured we needed it today. Yeah, I I, uh, I will say that. Lighten things up around you are, here. Yeah, I'm, I'm in my normal dark, but you are like, you are like a beacon of light right now. I bought this out in Arizona at the uh, Johnny O store when we were at the out there for the Super Bowl. I oh. wore it the first time that day. Al took a picture of me, actually. said I was the best-dressed guy on Radio Row that day. So this this outfit here has tremendous impact on you guys, and I'm glad that it does. As I, long it, as it's positive. As long as no, it's no, positive. No, it, no, it, it is positive. I mean, I was like, wow, this, this guy is... I'm ready to go today. He's rocking and rolling today, and he's bringing out the sunshine. Yeah. And I'll, I will say that given what, what happened with the Knicks and... And, you know, maybe Nestor Cortez can get out of the first inning without giving up runs. Yeah. Um, I would think that, uh, you know, you are the opposite of, of what those guys are probably feeling right now, given the fact that you're you're so bright today. Yeah, a little bit bright. I got the Doc Gooden coming in studio today. Uh, so we'll be hanging out with him at, at 8 a.m. So that's uh, another reason to be excited as his number 16 will be retired on April 14th. Uh, but, yes, yeah, speaking of current pitchers, Nestor Cortez, another one of these first-inning uh, meltdowns and then settles in again. And I always feel like there's guys – like, even Garrett Cole, as great as he was, if, when he had struggles last year, was early in games. You know, it would be the first inning. Uh, Tanaka used to have issues, like, giving up a home run in the first inning. So, Nestor Cortez has got to figure that out. But I'm not – you know, you can't be concerned about the Yankees because they lost 7 nothing. They will, they will be fine. The one thing that you'll say, though, is this is another game – 
uh, and just watching the highlights because I didn't stay up for the whole thing, where John Carlos Stanton just looks like he he just does not have any hand-eye coordination anymore. Like he's just if you watch his at bats, he he's, guesses. He's got no shot. He's, he guesses. And Aaron Boone was asked about it. He's like, oh, you know, the swing speed's good, and he's putting good cuts on it, but when he has those good cuts, you just can't miss the baseball. Yeah, no crap. I mean, a good cut doesn't mean anything. I, the scouting report of him is slider low and away. I just because flailing just, at it. Be right, because he's guessing that it's a fastball. Every it, I, That's the only thing that I can put my finger on and even think about being in the batter's box and just swinging and looking like that. That means, to me, he's thinking fastball, and every pitcher that he faces throws him sliders low and away because that's the book on him. It has to be. Yeah, I mean, and I would I would just keep an eye on him if I'm Brian Cashman and say, this, we can't have this guy in the lineup if he's going to be a zero like this. And I know he's got one home run already. Every time he steps up to the plate, you feel like he's going to strike out. I mean, that's just, it's like, this guy's going to be flailing at something. Someone's going to throw a fastball by him. If he somehow gets lucky and connects, like, wow, great, good for him. But he looks shot. What is he about batting 133, I think? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, yeah. I'm not expecting much from him statistically across the board. Which is kind of a shame because you're paying him a lot of money. Yeah, of, of course. And he's healthy. And that was the other thing that Aaron Boone said. I, I heard He's like, well, he's, you know, he's, health, he's healthy and that's the biggest thing. Okay, he's healthy, but... If you're going to be a zero in the lineup and just be completely clueless at the plate, I'd rather you be on the IL. So that's that's going to be an issue in that lineup. And thank God that that Juan Soto is there for them because those days that Aaron Judge doesn't have it, then Juan Soto can pick up the slack because John Carlos Stanton can't in the middle of that lineup. Can't do it. He has very small doses in that Yankee uniform. Has he been able to – and he hit in the postseason – well, give him credit for that, but man, these regular seasons for him are just the disappearing acts. Yeah, he's either flailing at pitches or he's hurt. Do you uh, do you agree with my assessment that he is guessing? Yeah, I mean, he's either guessing or he's lost all ability to hit a baseball. It's one of those two. Like his hand-eye coordination is is done, and he's he's too old now and not as quick. <clears throat> Or he's just guessing, thinking, all right, a fastball is going to be right down the plate, and then it's a slider, and he just swings over it. It's one of the two. It is frustrating, that's for sure. Yeah. It's also frustrating that uh, you have another rain out, and I guess the, hopefully the, the Mets and the Tigers can play two on Thursday. Yesterday's game uh, already uh, rescheduled. I mean, let me, ask you, well, let me ask you a question. Now. Yeah. So we know what the weather was. Yep. And we know what the weather has been. And you got two teams – that aren't going to see each other the rest of the year. They're playing in April, and I know we. I feel like we go through this every year. Yep. And th- this time of year, you can get anything, and you're and you're going to get a lot of rain around here. That's just that's just part and parcel of what's going on. Yeah. I I mean, what took so long last night to to basically postpone that game? I mean, what? I mean, it was nine o'clock last night, and I get a text from a buddy of ours. He goes, "Way to treat your customers," and I'm yeah. like, "Yeah, no kidding." So, let's see, what was it? Uh, Anthony DeComo, maybe, uh, was the guy who said that they thought they had a window last night, the Mets did. What's that? They thought they had a window. Here it is. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I mean, like, there was no window. So, I got a buddy of mine, ours, sends me a, a weather update, and this is at 827 last night. Okay. This is the forecast for Flushing, Queens at 5 p.m. How is it possible the Mets didn't cancel? It's now 8.30 p.m., and they're still in a rain delay. Nice way to treat your customers. Bunch of idiots. And I'm like, okay, idiots. I'll say almost 9 p.m. and still in a rain delay. It's unconscionable, so stupid and unnecessary. Great customer service. And then I said, I'm going to bed. I well, I mean, it's it. it's twofold. I mean, it's because we were talking about this off the air, and you're like, who in the hell would get in their car and go to that game? Like, just as dumb as it is for the Mets to think that there's a window, it's even dumber for somebody to get in the car and say, hey, I'm going to go there. I mean, it's, it's just crazy. <laughs> All you got to do there is look at weather.com, look at whatever you need to, go through the hourly forecast and know that there was no shot. I mean, we said on the show in the morning yesterday that they were going to get washed out. So this was the explanation from Mets officials. The Mets will, uh, Mets officials anticipate a weather window from seven to nine tonight. Per Carlos Mendoza, their current intentions to try to play 
barring a change in forecast over the next couple of hours. So, yeah, they thought they had a window between 7 and 9. There was no window. Where the hell's Matt Hammer when you need him? <laughs> yeah, I mean. I mean, get somebody that actually knows what's going on over there. Yeah, I, I feel like they do. Like, how, with all the technology today. A lot of technology. Don't you feel like anybody could look at the radar on their phone and be like, okay, it ain't happening. Well, that that's why our friend sent me his radar screenshot. Yeah. Just, but. I mean, like, you know, and if we know it, he knows it. You would think they would know it. Yeah, I do think, though, that when people say, like, oh, they just open the doors to sell concessions, I, I don't think that's the case. I actually think that with the travel and, and how the Tigers and the Mets don't play each other, again, that they want to try to get these games in because the scheduling is a disaster. That's mm-hmm. what I think it's about. I don't think it's so they could sell, you know, 10 more Shake Shack burgers. I don't think that really means anything. Do you think there's a chance that the Mets could get rained out 10 days in a row? Ten days and in a row, and then kind of restart the season. Yeah, uh, I would say five would be more realistic. Ten is a little much, but yeah, it's possible. And by the way, this by is the not- way, it's uh, you know, Kodai Sang- maybe Kodai Sengo will be back <laughs> after after ten days of straight rain delays. I, if you're going to schedule two teams that play each other once during the season, don't do it outdoors in the beginning of April because this is the situation you're going to get. So then everybody's looking. Oh, they don't play each other again. We got to find a mutual day off in July. Well, well, they got the mutual day off on Thursday, right? So hopefully they'll be able to get two in that day. But what if it was an, another rain day on Thursday? Then what the hell are you doing? You got two games that you got to make up somehow. Well, both these teams probably won't be in the playoff race anyway, so they probably just play one sixty, and that'd be end of it, right? You really need to play one sixty two when you got no shot. Don't they play? They have to play one sixty two, don't they? Nah, I don't think so. Not if they affect. If it's two teams that are completely out of any sort of seeding issues with anybody, then I think that they don't have to. You'd have to think that if if somehow they don't get this game in these games in on Thursday, that the Tigers will be back to New York to play the Yankees, and maybe the Mets will be in town around that time. I don't know. They'll then, get it in on Thursday. Maybe they can have a triple header. Yeah, play a like triple at nine o'clock at Bust night. them over back to City Field. Why not? All right, Boomer and Gio. All the time they had those split squad games down in the spring. Yeah, they could do that. Yes. <laughs> split the squad up. <laughs> Send the B squad to City Field. Have them still beat the Mets. 